Obviously, a lot of social injustice, racial injustice issues are being addressed in sports and in the National Hockey League, a group of non-white NHL players have formed the Hockey Diversity Alliance. It was announced on Monday. Vander Kane from the San Jose Sharks, Akeem Alou no longer in the league, Wayne Simmons, Trevor Daly among the players, and Matt Dumba from the Minnesota Wild is also part of that group of seven. Announced that on social media on Monday, and our pleasure to visit with Matt for a few minutes here to find out more about the what and the why. So let's hit the let's hit the how this all came together, Matt, as you have played for the Wild now for seven years as a defenseman, a guy who is a high pick in the league and are using your voice towards this issue. How did this all come together? Uh, started coming together in November, actually. Um, just a group of, group of guys talking, um, kind of expressing to each other that there's probably a need for this in the league. And um, as of the last two weeks, I think I've talked to these guys every day for over an hour. So um, there's been some really good talks. And... I think we have an opportunity to do big things in our sports and, you know, help a lot of kids. Um, I think that's one of our main focuses is um, just eradicating racism and making sure our game's for everyone. You mentioned you started the conversation back in November. Uh, the Akeem Alou incident really brought a lot of conversation about treatment of players and race in hockey to much more of a top-line conversation. How much of it had you experienced growing up in Saskatchewan and your path to the National Hockey League? Yeah, um, being a minority in the prairies in Saskatchewan and then um, in Calgary, it uh, wasn't easy um, growing up kids with my darker skin tone really um kind of threw the book at me seeing what would stick um as far as uh racial slurs so just knowing all that all everything that my family went through um seeing my mom come away from the rink seeing my dad you know our family leave in tears um it just re you know talking to these guys just rekindled those feelings and um you know when i when I think about it more um, and when I was, you know, laying my head down to sleep at night, feeling this, it, it was just strong, such strong feelings and such passionate feelings that I don't believe any kid should have to go through that or, you know, bottle that up or hide that from their parents trying to be strong um, as like all of us in our, in our group did. And I'm, and I'm sure so many kids, um, minority kids across uh, our countries do all the time, um, you know, trying to take the higher road. But that's not, uh, you know, that's not a conversation that uh, white parents have with their kids. And I don't think it's a, it's a conversation any, any parent should have with their kids because uh, racism um, shouldn't be tolerated in their sport. Matt, how close did you come to just saying, I don't want to put myself through this. I don't want to continue when you watched your parents leaving the rink so emotional. Um, you know, my love for the game was strong and I had some good friends around me that, um, you know, would always stand up for me or try to pick me up when I was down, um, confronting other players when, you know, I had to leave the rink. Um, so I'm very fortunate for that, but over my, over my years in the NHL, um, I've always made, made a stand of, you know, wanting to bring players, um, from minor hockey associations within Minnesota who have faced racism into our locker room. And sometimes it is the opposite story where kids aren't sure if they want to continue playing this sport because it is so difficult. And um, they went through so many trying times with their family. Um, so when I see that, that, you know, that just breaks my heart. And I know there's a couple kids who have come through the room and completely flipped the script. You know, they meet the guys, uh, they meet some of their favorite players they've grown up grown up watching, and that totally turns them around because um, I think this r racism and the, your language and how you, how you talk um, is definitely – kids are still learning that, and they can be ignorant at, at times and um, just childish. So um, as you grow up and realize um, there's no place for that, um, it, it becomes, becomes a more um, – secure family and, you know, brotherhood, like hockey. Hockey's kind of always been, but it starts with the youth. 
Matt, you were the seventh overall pick when the Wild selected you, so you were in a high-profile spot coming into the franchise, coming into the organization. And you've seen what has played out on TV screens across North America and the world in Minnesota the last few weeks. What have what have you felt as you've seen a city where you've grown up in a lot of ways professionally go through this very difficult time? Yeah, it's a city that's um, really taken me in uh, with open arms. Um, you know, I work with um, a group called ACES, uh, Athletes Committed to Educating Students. And a lot of those students are from the neighborhoods um, and communities that, you know, are being burned down in the riots um, and the protests. And, you know, so I was really scared for those kids. I feel like I'm a part of those communities. I get on Lake Street there. Um, that's a place where I've been going for tattoos for years. I have friends who live on that mm. street. So seeing all that and just being here in Calgary um, has been very difficult for me because um, I want to be on those on those front lines. I want to be helping out. Um, and just like some of my friends are, uh, one in particular, JT Brown, who's been who's been out, you know, um, helping hand out groceries, cleaning up uh, the streets of Lake Street. Um, you know, he's been, he's been awesome. Um, so I've kind of been living vicariously through, um, my friends and, and family who are, are making a difference back in Minnesota. So I, I'm proud of them. Uh, so proud of them. I'm proud of how the community has come together now and is really picking each other up. So, um, I've got some things, um, that I'm going to release in this next week that will hopefully help benefit those who are in need right now. Um, and I'd love to share you with those, uh, share this with you guys, but it's not come, uh, it hasn't come full circle yet. It's not done yet, but um, I'll definitely reach out and, you know, look for support from everyone in this hockey world. Um, Cause I think when it, just, when it, it, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, 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 that, that's fine. I was just going to say when, when, when it does happen, uh, you can be sure that the hockey community will be well aware of it and we'll, uh, we'll pass it along as best we can. Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was going to ask you about uh, a report from Frank Saravalli from TSN. I give him credit for the report that said that when this alliance of players was coming together, that uh, you all were able to speak with Colin Kaepernick on a couple of Zoom calls about that. Uh, if that's true, what advice was he able to pass along to the group about how to go forward? Um, yeah, um, that was, that was pretty crazy. Um, having cap on there and seeing how, um, he's, he's supporting what we're doing. Um, and just kind of giving us advice on how to represent ourselves and how to represent, um, the community, um, was super cool. Uh, he's been on the front lines of it, uh, for a long time now. So just his insight, um, and just wisdom was was awesome to listen to. He had uh, he had seven dudes on that call who were just sitting there, just just silence when he talked. Um, so it, it's really cool to see another guy from a, from a different sport reaching out and recognizing that, that um, there's a need for this in hockey. And you know he wants to be he wants to help out as uh, as as much as we can get him involved. Matt, what piece of advice did he give resonated the most with you? I think the biggest one for me was just the unity that uh, that we'll have to have moving forward. Um, you know, bringing people in, um, having having the right ambassadors, including everyone. That's what that's what this is about. Um, just eradicating eradicating racism. Um, can't be on the shoulders of seven guys. Um, you know, every everyone's um, gonna have a have a part of this, and you know, we're just we're just on this um, on this committee as the you know seven board members. But there's so many people who are gonna be behind the scenes, um, people who are gonna want to join this and and make some moves. So there, it's just it's just limitless. He he didn't want us to box ourselves in to anything because. Um, I think as we all see it, um, there can be a real change here in our sport and we can kind of be the pioneers for this. And um, 
I hope it's, I hope this is just one step. You know, this is day two on um, the announcement of the um, HDA. And, you know, hopefully a year from now, we've done some big things in two years, three, three years, four years, and we can just watch, watch this thing grow. Um, because I think it's, it's time. I want to ask you a hockey question. Just one last quick one here. Have you heard from any of your wild teammates after this was announced? Yeah, a couple of them have uh, have reached out. Um, it's pretty cool showing their support. Um, you know, I think this is guys. Uh, I think everyone can kind of see this in our game. If you just look around in an NHL locker room, there's not a lot of color. So and that's just that's just the facts of our game. But um, those guys are seeing. Those guys are learning. They're seeing uh, what's going on in, in the media, what's going on in our community back home. And, you know, I got some great teammates. So I know those guys are going to step up and, you know, they're going to support us through this. And that's what it's going to take, all, every, every hand on deck. Uh, one hockey question. Like your team, you had a slow start to the season, picked it up. We're making a good push here. We're on the edge of the playoffs. So really uh, the wild are kind of the team that benefits and it's just to have those teams nine through 12 have a chance in this best of five. If we get to that final phase to play for those uh, eight spots in the Western conference playoffs, how is your skating been? Have you been on skates? Are you starting to think about getting to these phases and getting yourself back into hockey shape as we start to round closer to that date? Yeah. Um, started the year is tough is, you know, it was a long time off of hockey um, with my injury. And it, it's crazy. You got to just get get back to that mindset that makes you um, the player you are. And kind of took me a little bit to find it. But um, I think it I think it came around at the end of the year. And, you know, I was playing some of my best hockey. And, you know, our team was uh, our team was buzzing. So to have this opportunity in front of us to play um, Vancouver, I know guys are excited. Guys, uh, guys are starting to starting to get ready, starting to get on the ice. Me personally, I've only been on the rollerblades um, this far in, in Calgary, um, but I do know one of my friends um, has a barn just outside of town that he put some ice in. So um, I'll be able to <laughs> skate there and skate with some guys. Um, so th- that's going to be sweet. Matt, I know it's a, an uphill climb here and not the easiest topic of conversation, but thank you for sharing the seeds behind this and your feelings. We look forward to seeing you, what uh, what all seven of you and beyond do with this, and more importantly, see you back on the ice as well uh, in, in hockey competition as an example for a lot of other kids around North America. Matt, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.